All right, we're back at uh, Tea Time Disc Golf at the Block House. Uh, disc Golf Course and Country Club. Uh, beautiful location. The sunny side and the dark side, two 18-hole courses. I am joined by Andrew Fish doing commentary. Hi, everybody. Uh, I don't want to give away anything, but this is going to be some of the most exciting golf that we're going to see uh, with the final round action. Uh, the sunny side, we have some amazing players here. Uh We've got Andrew Fish, we got Chris Dickerson, we got MJ, and uh, the one and only Barry Schultz has joined us for the final round. Yeah, quite a card lined up here. Uh, a lot of Mid Atlantic and Southeastern Woods golfers. Yeah, MJ and Barry, uh, being from the North Carolina area, are extremely familiar with this type of golf. So this is, I know Chris's third time here. I've been here about four times. Barry and MJ have plenty of experience on this course. Um, and it's called the sunny side, but don't be fooled. As compared to the dark side, it doesn't have that many fewer trees. There's more than enough to go around. Yeah, but definitely has your more uh, your open holes as well. I mean, you've got a chance to really unleash, and uh, you're going to see a lot more power drivers being thrown uh, on this course. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We got uh, we got to give Mike a big thanks for hosting this thing, uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start off. Uh, hole number eleven is where we're going to start. Uh, yeah, this round. They actually like starting the lead card on hole 11 because hole 10 is uh, pretty dramatic. There's the uh it, it's a par 4, par 3, par 4 that's eagleable and it has a lot of the tournament central behind it. So you usually get a pretty big crowd gathering by the time lead card is coming around to the end. Yeah, not to mention one of the most beautiful greens in disc golf too. Definitely. So, uh but hole number 11, uh we're going to get started here. Again, it's it's going to be a par 4, uh 550 feet. Um and you just want to play a controlled shot here. And that's exactly what you're going to do is just a nice straight shot, get it to skip up on the grass. The grass is nice and short right now. Um, very conducive to you getting a little bit more distance. For sure. I'm actually going fairway driver there uh, because I don't think I can reach it. I'd rather just make the gap and then trust my second shot. Chris is definitely going to attack. He's got plenty of power. Yeah, Chris is showing you a side of his game that certainly gives him an advantage because if you can be on that downslope, and he is literally looking at circle two putting on this, which is outstanding. Yeah, he, he threw it a little high and inside, but you kind of have to test that in order to have a chance at eagle here. MJ does about the same thing. He's going to kind of filter up to the top side, but he's still very much in the clear. Yeah, I guess one of the only obstacles uh, is you can see the bunker with the high grass on the right-hand side. Uh, if you do get caught behind that, it is a tricky up and down, um, but fair enough to be able to stay away from that. Yeah, I, I know that that's kind of my aim point. I want to start on the left side of that. Barry's going right at it, and he'll skip just past yeah, good everybody off the tee just fine yeah very good result so these guys will come down and and we're just looking at a nice little controlled shot right to the basket and that should be good for your birdie yeah a little bit of ground play it's probably 20 feet long MJ going purple banger at it and uh, puts it within about two and a half feet. As is custom for MJ and his purple banger. And Barry with a fantastic upshot. Pretty anticlimactic until we get to Chris's putt here, and he's going to give it a good run. Oh. That would have been a great way to start off the round. And a good putt. Um, we're going to clean up your birdie, and, and these guys should have no problem cleaning up uh, uh, to get a nice star frame to start off the, uh, the round of golf, but with an easy as a par four as this is, that's what you expect um, out of the lead card is coming up here and and 
and getting your easy three and then trying to move on. Right. As we go into the uh, the back nine of the sunny side here, since we're starting on 11, the back nine is really about scoring. Most of these holes are going to be fairly open uh, and not not super long. If you get in a groove, you can you can really rattle off some birdies here. Yeah, these next two holes are probably uh, a little bit tougher uh, to get your birdie, um, especially uh, hole number 12, which is a shorter par three, um, but boy, is a technical. You've got you to throw the right shot, and we'll probably see uh, a flick or a nice turnover putter shot out of you guys, um, but it, it's just tough to get in a position to, to have a putt. And the basket is actually short of where the drone is flying right now, and to the right, um, it is just going to be a 247-foot, just controlled shot. That looked just about right. You shouldn't be too far away. Yeah, that's well inside the circle. The idea here is just to throw something that's controlled and reasonably stable, uh, beat the leaning tree uh, to the left side, and then move a little bit right. Chris is doing that just perfectly. Yeah, Chris has shown you exactly how to do it, and he puts it five feet from the pin. So really good shot out of Chris. Not necessarily the mistake that you want to make is uh, leaking this to the right. Very surprising misses by two very controlled players uh, getting caught up early. Yeah, and Barry gets his, uh, his second shot down in putting range, though. It uh, doesn't look like he's too far off. And MJ throwing a flick right up uh, underneath the basket. This might be the most flicks I've ever seen MJ throw in a tournament. <laughs> yeah, me too. And good birdie out of you. Yeah, as long as you can make it to that access road, you seem to have a putt, you know. And that's kind of what golf is on these birdie courses. It's not so much about parking it every time. It's about giving yourself as many opportunities as you can. Yeah, so Chris will clean up his birdie. So you and you and Chris are going to get the twos here. And uh, we'll watch MG, MJ and Barry clean up their, their pars there. Um, and we'll go ahead and move on to hole number 13. Uh, hole 13 is... Certainly a tougher uh, hole. You've got to have a controlled right-hand turn shot. Um, and this hole is actually going to finish with a very tight wooded area. Um, so where you end up is extremely important uh, for your second shot. Absolutely. So this is going to score as a par 4, uh, even though it's only 350 feet. It is theoretically reachable, uh, but you have to you have to be very precise off the tee and as you approach the basket. And this is one of those holes that the tee box has changed over the years. And uh, this, this tee position uh, certainly brings in elements of the game that are a little bit more difficult. So uh, we'll see how you guys can navigate this fairway. Absolutely. And the crew at the Blockhouse is always making improvements to these courses. And uh, looking behind this tee, it sure seems that they are clearing out to prepare it to be a longer hole even. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I did remember looking backwards and going, oh boy. Yeah, that'll turn it into a true par four. Uh, so big ups to them, always thinking about how they can push their course in another direction. Yeah, some amazingly, uh, well, that was just an amazing shot by Chris to get a flick uh, up into the woods there and be that close for the birdie putt. Uh, but yeah, big, big shout out to the guys at the blockhouse that are putting in the extra effort to, uh, uh, to make some really good adjustments to the course. And some of that's in preparation for uh, the U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship, going to be held in Spotsylvania in 2019. Uh, this and several other courses in the Spotsy area are just ideal for hosting big tournaments like that, and it's great that they're getting their due. And yeah, make those women work, though. Push those tees back. I think Barry's going pro Starfire here. Not a disc you see a lot of on the course, yeah. but he sure knows how to work it. Well, he left himself right in the middle uh, of the fairway, so he should have a relatively easy up and down. Yeah, 
and he puts it right up there next to the basket. So that's a good shot. Now you, a little bit trickier of an upshot here. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck on this right side and uh, just had to snake something through, get it close, and an opportunity to for the three. So here's MJ with a good look. Oh, man. Chris is probably 35 at most here, just outside the circle. Good birdie putt out of you. It is that. Good enough. And these guys are all going to clean up here next to the basket. Three is a fine score on this hole. I know Chris is probably a little disappointed not to cash in another opportunity at Eagle, but you'll still take a three on this. Yeah, and this is, we're, we're early in the round here. I think that there's opportunities uh till still to present themselves um but clean enough for a birdie from that far away is not a bad not a bad way to go here so as we uh as we move on uh we've got you and you and chris are starting the battle here we have uh we have a few birdies here in a row uh and uh, we move on to one of the easier downhill par threes um it's just a controlled putter or uh or mid-range for some people um you just want to make sure that you stop it short of the ob that is behind the basket yeah the so the drone is flying the inside line that uh some backhanders are going to take i know chris and i are going to throw the forehand to the left side of that guardian tree and just let it kind of trail down the hill really good shot uh good control with the speed on that disc that is probably the most important thing is making sure that you're leaving yourself uh pin high on this hole right like steve said there's uh there's some ob behind the basket at its closest it's probably 30 to 35 but since you're coming downhill it it sneaks up on you in a hurry Chris has kind of put himself in the toughest 12-footer he's going to ever see <laughs> yeah. inside of that cedar tree. Yeah, that is that is the only place to, to be that close to the basket and be in trouble. And MJ going flick here. Somewhat surprising, but he is going to leave himself a uh, uh, probably a circle two putt. Yeah, he's maybe 40. And he he will be looking downhill at this. It's not the easiest putt he's going to have. And Barry going the traditional putter shot. I mean, and just perfect. He's been doing that for a long time. He could easily be playing Masters and whomping on some folks, but when you can throw a shot like that, he's going to stick around and open. I have a lot of respect for the guys who have the ability to play Masters but choose to, to stay. As, in my opinion, if you feel like you can beat the open field, go out there and try. Yeah, Barry won this just two years ago, so it's not like he's outclassed by anybody. He's he's very solid. Yeah, and a good two out of you. Keep that streak going. That's four in a row. And let's see if Chris can, can maintain here too because this would be a great start for you guys. Chris definitely had to work for that, but uh, it's in. It's it's a birdie. He'll be able to move on. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest putt, but it did stick. Uh, so MJ taking the par. The rest of you guys are taking your birdies, uh, which is not too shabby. You've still got a two-stroke lead uh, over Chris, uh, and MJ and Barry are tied, uh, and they're not too far back here. Anything can happen. Uh, going down the stretch uh, 
on this course especially oh yeah there's there's a lot of birdies out here there's a lot of trees um it's it's not uncommon for a couple stroke swings to happen almost immediately here yeah, hole 15 uphill 210 feet really controlled shot just get it right in between those trees uh you can be a little bit short and still have a putt um but if you are pin high right or left it gets really tricky so you really want to keep it close being in line with the basket is probably the most important thing here i sawed mine off and uh you know, if I had pushed further, I might not have a look at this at all. Yeah, Chris with a beautiful shot there. Yeah, that's just perfect. And Barry got enough height out of that, and it was stable enough to get him his birdie there. Yeah, that was just a nice floaty rock. Uh, I think it was probably a beat one. He just threw it so nose up that it acted over stable. And I could have told you that MJ was going to throw the purple banger. And he made the same mistake that you did, but got fortunate that it, it did actually make it past that pine on the left-hand side. Yeah, and he got a nice checkup on a root. So you guys should all be pretty close here. You've got the trickiest part of the bunch. And no problem. I like the Argyle socks, by the way. Got to look good to play good. That's right. Yeah, MJ, no problem. Yeah, dead center. The other two, easy tap-ins for their star uh, to complete the star birdie frame here. Sometimes putts like that are easier. MJ's putt where it's kind of framed out like that for him. Uh, sometimes when you know you have to hit a gap, sometimes it just helps you have confidence to, to really go after it. So we're going to move on to uh, hole number 16 uh, after yet another star frame. Uh, that actually has uh, you and Chris at five in a row uh, going into hole 16, which is Another shorter downhill. There is a lot of trouble on this hole. Um, the basket location is actually on the other side of this marsh area that plays OB. Um, so you've got a tricky landing zone. Right. With all the rain we had, uh, they didn't move this basket until pretty close to the tournament time. It gets real muddy down where the green is, and boy, that looked like it was on a good track. Yeah, so you're blind on the tee. You can only see it if you uh, run up a tower that's to the left of the basket or to the left of the tee pad or run forward. We'll see if Chris runs after this thing, but looks like he's leaving that just a little bit left, but actually a good result by hitting and stopping there. Right. He's still going to have a, a long 20. 28 footer probably coming straight back at the OB, which isn't more than four or five feet behind the basket. Here's a friendly PSA for you that that, that OB is literally five feet from the base of that basket. So be careful. And Barry leak that to the opposite side. Probably okay though. Do you, yeah, I think he's going to be safe where he is. He ended up safe, but the way Barry putts, uh, it, it could be, a little hairy whether he wants to run this or not mj with a good shot and uh yeah just that's the problem is you can scoot back there long and then you've got a uh, obstructed putt coming back of the basket and ob right behind it um so that's going to be a tough one to go for Barry at least made the miss you want to, to make. If he had hit off the cage or on the left side, no good. Oh, what a putt. So scary. MJ saying he missed the he made the same putt as uh, as round one. Very both of these, nice. both of these guys hitting that death putt shows that they are here to play and here to win. There's, yeah. there's no layup happening right now. Now Chris is on a mission right now. I mean, you guys are five in a row. Okay, you're sitting 
closer than just about anybody on this hole. So that's a putt that he has to make. If he wants to stay in contention, he's got to keep charging, um, you know, because you are not missing this putt. So it's literally now you guys are six in a row uh, on on birdieing. So uh, just an absolute stellar start to this round for you two. Uh, MJ not far behind you guys. He's only missed two uh, out of the holes that we've played. Um, and here we go. Uh, 133 feet hole number 17 this is tricky yeah this is probably the shortest hole i've ever played in an a tier but it doesn't mean it's easy uh it's called pachinko for a reason because you're going to end up with a weird kick almost certainly yeah you're going to see grenades you're going to see flick rollers you're going to see backhands you're going to see every shot imaginable while playing this hole So Chris is going just an incredibly technical shot. He's going a panty thumber that he wants to stall and just float straight down. A little bit short. A little bit short, but technically he pulled it off. I mean, if he had gone a little bit further... Uh, yeah, and there's MJ with the hook thumb roller, which is something you don't see many people throw. No, there, MJ is so crafty and so technical. He's got that disc in the bag for this shot and one other. I'll give kudos to the one guy I know who throws that too is uh, Johnson Cardinal Blaze throws a, a hook thumb roller all over the place. I've seen Matt Dollar do it, Yeah, but not on this hole. And Barry not happy with that result at all, nor would I be. He's, he's left himself probably circle's edge putt, uh, maybe just inside or just outside. But And here you are. This would keep the streak alive. Oh, so close. I was happy with the height on that. But really, anything that's an easy three or an opportunity at two is fine on this hole. It's, it's designed to frustrate you, make you question if you made the right choice or not. Barry walking it in. That's a great par save. Yeah, he knew that was good out of his hand. And keeps the streak alive. Uh, Chris is definitely, he's moving right now. I mean, he is absolutely knowing that he has to just keep birdieing in order to keep, keep pace with you. Um, and that's the first stroke that he's been able to catch up on. So, Yeah, that'll bring him within one of the lead. But don't count out anybody else. It's no, MJ's birdieing. MJ's on a streak, too. He's playing fantastic golf. So you and Barry clean up your, your pars there, and we got MJ and Chris with a birdie uh, on that hole. Um, that keeps Chris going. He is seven in a row, um, and we move on to uh, hole number 18. Yeah, I really like hole 18. It's a technical wood shot uh, that you need to have some shape on. You could throw it dead straight, but that doesn't keep the fairway as wide as you'd like it to. You hit one of those last trees and you kick left and you will find OB uh, if you aren't fortunate. So there is a little bit of danger to the left, but pretty much a straightforward hole. Chris is taking what's probably the best play if you have it. He's going with a, a mid-range forehand that's going to hopefully flex a little bit for him. Yeah, just stand up and go straight, and that is textbook. Yeah. Really good. I mean, I think that he probably wanted to go left side of that last tree, um, but boy, you'll take that all day long. Uh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna take it back. No, no. Yeah. 
A little bit short, but MJ should be happy with that. Right. Anything over that creek is uh, a very makeable putt. Not automatic, but makeable. I need to find a good nickname for that purple banger. I try not to think about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, you're safe over there. That uh, was that was a bad miss. I did not hit my intended line, and I'm fortunate to be circle's edge left side. Yeah, you can see you can see the rope uh, OB uh, when your disc came in. Now you're not near the OB, but that is how close it is. So it does come into play on that left side. Barry looks like he's dead on that center tree. And that is getting real close to that OB line. Right. But Barry uh, nearly double penalized for that. He's in bounds, but from hitting that tree to going OB would be a, a be pretty brutal. rough turn of events. Yeah, especially when you throw almost the perfect shot. You know, I mean, you're, you're dead center going down the gap. It's going to slide up to the basket. but And he wanted that, but leave himself his three. Ah, great stick. Yeah, thank you, basket number 18. Yeah, really. I mean, and you know how big that was because with a miss there and Chris tapping in, you guys would have been tied uh, going into the back. But, uh, you know, if Chris makes his putt here, you're going to maintain a one-stroke one lead uh, with nine holes to play. I actually didn't know at this point that he was basically throwing a perfect game. Yeah, I mean, this is... It's incredible to watch, to be honest with you. You know, I've, I've never seen somebody go nine in a row on the sunny side. Um, and just amazing golf. You know, he did, he, it wasn't flashy. He made his putts where he needed to make his putts. He threw good shots. Um, but everybody had a great nine. What if I told you I had gone 10 down on the back nine one time? It's, it's, it would be amazing. You know, I, I mean, did that, it with a borrowed putter. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. So, uh, but that does that. We're gonna go to. We're gonna finish up on hole number one, um, which this is one of the more iconic holes of disc golf out of the blockhouse for sure. Definitely. Yeah. This is often the first thing people see when they get out here because it is hole one, and it's just a perfect disc golf hole. This bush in the middle is kind of what folks are aiming at, trying to land. Um, there's. OB to the right side, you can see the red stakes over there. They'll kind of circle around the basket. Um, but if you bail out too far left, there's a lot of shul over there as well. It'll make your upshot very difficult. Absolutely. And you can see this is where everybody camps on the right-hand side. So a lot of activity, everyone having a good time. Uh, and, you know, this is this is what disc golf is all about at the blockhouse is, is this hole. Yeah. All the players are occupied right now, but there's still families and spectators and volunteers out uh like you're almost always going to have a gallery on hole one. And Chris just laying into that. And in a good spot. I mean, that's, that's kind of an ideal place. He's got a downhill little putter shot going right down to the basket. He should be in really good shape for a second shot where he is. MJ getting something out there. That's a really good looking shot as well. Yeah. Any anything that's out in the middle of that field is just fine. This whole six fifteen, so none of us are expecting to reach it and to it. It's more about putting yourself in position for that second shot. And there you go. Very good. little bit of pressure on Barry to throw a good drive here after watching three go right in the middle. Uh, he's a champion. He doesn't know what he's... He doesn't know pressure. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a fantastic looking shot. And as you said, he was probably aiming at the bush, and certainly he hit it. Uh, you know, the, the amount of noise that comes out of that pond at night is unbelievable. I was camping next to it, and... Uh, I, I seriously considered going to my car to get earplugs. Yeah. The, uh, the frogs just go to town on it. It's just incredible. All right, so 
Barry with his upshot here. He's putting that short of the OB, thank God. Uh, but he's going to be right at circle's edge. Yeah, maybe not the putt you want after uh, having a fairly open up shot. And Michael just showing everybody how to play the hole. Easy drive, easy up shot, and uh, tap and birdie. Not too shabby yourself. Yeah, same thing. Just trying to make it easy. Chris with the little half throw, putting it right up there. Just uncomplicated golf. And a good putt for birdie out of Barry. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be an incredible feat to go nine for nine on the front nine. Uh, Chris has done it yeah, and made it look pretty easy most of the time. Sure. You're not too far off, though. I mean, with this putt, you're looking at eight down through the front nine. Uh, yeah, MJ's right there, too. He's going to be seven down through the front nine. That is some stellar golf. Yeah, and don't sleep on Barry. He's five down. So that's going to leave us all in good position going into the back here. Yeah. So that is the front nine uh, of the final round. Uh, again, we'd like to say uh, thank you to Tea Time Disc Golf, to Austin and Christian for coming out and doing everything that you do. Uh, thank you to the uh, uh, Blockhouse, to Mike Trapasso, uh, creating an environment that we absolutely love to come and share with everybody. Um, and obviously to Andrew Fish, thank you for being here to do the commentary. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a it's a lot of fun to see this again and just to relive the experience. Yeah, so uh, join us. Come back for uh, for the second nine of the final round action uh, at the Blockhouse. It is a tight, tight battle, and I can promise you that the action is only going to get better. Uh, so we look forward to having you uh, come back and join us.